Uh, in this one, we're going to look at the module tree. That's this area over here on the left hand side, which we looked at briefly in the interface video. Before we get started, I'm going to go to high settings and I'm going to type in scale. And I'm going to this setting here, global high scale factor. And I'm just going to increase that to 125%. So this just makes the UI a little bit larger and makes it a bit easier for us to see the module tree in this video. So the module tree is the backbone of our project. This is where we add sound generators, containers, effects, MIDI processors, those, those are scripts, and modulators like LFOs and envelopes. It's also the place where we can control the routing of audio through our processors. So before we can start adding things to our module tree, we have to make sure it's unlocked for editing. And that's this green pencil icon here. So when it's green, it means we can edit the module tree. If we click on it, a lot of stuff disappears here and the module tree is locked for editing. So let's click that again to unlock it. And this is the default state when you open your project. So to add a module, we use one of these plus buttons on the right hand side and which one you click will depend on where in the chain you want to add a new module. So I'm going to add a module to the top level. So I'm going to click this plus button here and I'm going to select container. So this adds a container to our module tree. To rename the container or any module, hold shift on your keyboard and click on the module in question. And now we can edit the name. I'm going to call this container zero and then hit enter. To delete a module, just click on the trash icon next to the module and then click OK. As well as this view we have in the module tree sidebar, we can actually click on one of the modules. So let's click on the master chain and it will open out a larger overview. And this will work whether or not edit mode is enabled or disabled. And this larger overview gives us all the same data we get over here. So we can see master chain, master chain, MIDI processors, that's this MIDI section here, gain modulation, that's this gain section here and effects. That's this one here. We also get some additional controls in the module header. We have a volume slider and a pan knob. We have a bypass button. And actually we have that over here in the module tree too, but not for all of the modules. So you can see we've got the bypass button here, but there isn't one for the master chain. However, for this interface script, we've got one. And in the module tree, that's this orange square. So we can do the same thing there. To add a module in this larger view, you just use the plus button. And to rename them, you just click, no need to hold shift. And to delete them, you just click the X over at the right. OK, let's add a few containers. So these containers are all within the master chain. And if we click these little buttons here to collapse things, we can see that these have been indented one step to the right. And these containers have bypass buttons, unlike the master chain. Now, if I add another container within container two, we can see that this container, container three, is indented from container two. And this little line here sort of indicates that container three is within container two. You can think of containers kind of like folders and this tree structure is kind of like a folder structure. So containers one, two, and three are within the master chain. And then this inner container three is within container two. I don't know why it's given that one the same name as this one actually. Usually it's a good idea for modules to have unique names. So let's rename this one to container four. I'm going to add a sine wave generator into container four. And I want you to observe these little boxes at the left hand side. I'm going to open the on screen keyboard and trigger a MIDI note. So these little boxes are actually peak meters and we can use them to visualize the flow of audio through our module tree. Let's collapse this up a little bit. So we can see that the audio is going from sine wave generator one to container four to container two, and then directly up to the master chain. So container one and container three are not affected. So this is one way how we can use the hierarchy of the module tree to control the flow of audio through our processors. We can also click on these peak meters to expand them and we get a full routing matrix for each one. We can click and click to redirect inputs and outputs. And if we hold control and click, we can clear them. 
If we hold shift and click, we can add send routing. We can also right click and we get some options in here to shortcut a few things. With a sine wave generator with only two channels, there's not much we can do in here, but if you have a larger project with perhaps a multi-mic sampler, you can route different microphone positions to different outputs and that kind of thing. So again, let's take a look at this in the larger overview. I'm going to click the master chain so we can see the same structure is represented here. And it might be a bit easier to see how things are contained within each other if we collapse them up. So container one doesn't have anything in it. Container two has container four inside of it. And container four contains the sine wave generator. And again, if I play a MIDI note, we can see these peak meters moving. If we want to just focus in in this larger view on a single module, we can double click on the header. So let's focus in on container four. And now we're just looking at container four and the sine wave generator. We can also get to this view just by clicking on container four here. At the top, we get some breadcrumbs to show us the sort of stages, the different levels that we're going through. So container four is where we are at now. If we go to container two, that's going to be container four's parent. And then we get to the master chain. Okay, let's delete a few of these. So we've just got the one container and now I'm going to add the sine wave generator here. And I'm going to open the larger view again. So within each module, we get various modulation chains that we can apply things to. So we've got the gain chain in the container here. We've got a MIDI processor chain. That's where we can add scripts and we've got an effects chain. Within the sine wave generator, we have this body section. And again, we can add scripts. We've got the MIDI processors, a gain chain, and by default, there's an envelope, a pitch chain. This might be where you would add a pitch wheel modulator and an effects chain. And the chains available will vary slightly depending on which modules you've added. Let's add a few effects to the effects section of the sine wave generator. I'm going to add a reverb, a delay, and a chorus. And they also appear over here in the module tree. If we want the chorus to be at the top, you would think we could just click on it and drag it up to the top, but that isn't going to work. Shuffling modules around in the module tree is a bit of a tile game. Basically, whichever one you drag onto another one is going to end up at the bottom of the list. So if I drag delay one onto the simple reverb, the delay is now at the bottom of the list. If I drag the chorus onto the simple reverb, that's at the bottom of the list. So if I want the chorus to be at the top of the list, I have to drag the other two. If I want to swap the position of the reverb and the delay, I can just drag those over each other. And now the delay is at the bottom of the list. It's a little annoying and hopefully in a future update to highs, this will be changed and we can move them around more freely. There are also some modules which have to go at the top of the chain. So if we had a filter, for example, that's always going to be at the top of the chain. So even if I drag it, it's going to stay at the top. And that's just to do with the way the signal routing works in highs. Usually when you add a new module, it goes to the bottom of the list. So let's add, oh, I don't know, a saturator. Let's add that. And that goes to the bottom of the list. But if we want to add it above the chorus, let me show you how we do that. So I'll remove it. We can right click on the chorus and select saturator. And now it's placed above the chorus. So if we select it from the right click menu, it will go above the thing we right clicked on. Now in the larger overview, we can't shuffle modules around. Clicking and dragging doesn't do anything. So you've got to do that over here in the module tree. But again, you can add processes above each other in this view. So if we want to add that saturator above the simple reverb, we can right click in the simple reverbs header and we select add processor before this module and then select saturator from the list. Now the large view of highs has a little glitch and it doesn't update straight away. You can see it's been added in the sidebar. We just have to close this and reopen it. And then it's here. So you can see it's a little quirky, but once you're familiar with those quirks, it's not difficult to find your way around and get it to do the things you want. So I'm not going to cover every single module that's available, but I encourage you to explore. We've had a look at some of the effects. If we go to the pitch section and click the plus, we can see some of the standard modulators that are available. So voice start modulators, these are triggered when you play a MIDI note. So if you want something to happen when you play a MIDI note, maybe randomize the pitch or something like that, you add from the voice start menu. Time variant modulators are things like CC controllers or pitch wheel controllers. So these are ones that are dynamic and can be altered in real time while sound is being processed by the uh, module in question. 
And like the time variant modulators, envelopes are also dynamic. And these are standard time-based envelopes like AHDSRs and things like that. Let's add a pitch wheel modulator just to demonstrate. So with the pitch wheel modulator, we get a few things to play around with. We get a knock to control the smoothing value. We get a table where we can adjust the curve of the pitch wheel. And using this slider, we can set the minimum and maximum range of the pitch wheel. We can also click on this button to enable or disable bipolar modulation mode. Some modulators, such as envelopes, have their own modulation chains. So it's possible to modulate modulators with other modulators. So in this example, I can control the attack time using velocity. And then the velocity modulator itself has its own set of controls that we can play around with to control how the modulator behaves. By the way, for controlling the curve here, I'm just holding right click and dragging up and down. And depending on the version of highs you're using, you can also control it with your mouse's scroll wheel. So one of the nicest features of highs when you get into scripting is that it's very modular. So if you've come from a system like Contact, where when you write a script, you tend to write one really large script for your entire project, that's quite a cumbersome way to work and it's not very modular. It's difficult to take bits of one script and include them in other projects and things like that. In highs, everything is sort of self-contained and you can write little individual scripts to do individual jobs and they can be really targeted and the module tree helps us with that. So for example, with the sine wave generator, we could add a script at this level. So this is in the MIDI processors. We select script processor. And whatever this script does, maybe it controls dynamics, maybe it controls the playable range or that kind of thing. But whatever it does, it's only going to affect this sine wave generator. So it's really targeted and precise. And then if you have another project where you need to do the same thing, you can just take this script and move it along to that other project. And you don't have to worry about what else is going on in this project because this one script is an isolated little island all by itself that just does a specific job. You can also reuse the same script multiple times within the same project as well, which is very useful. The kind of exception to that is the main interface. So you can only have one main interface script in your project. And the main interface is what the user is going to see on the front end when they run your plugin. And we can get a preview of that in here as well. Obviously there's nothing on our interface, but if there was, we can get a preview in here to see how it's going to look to a user. Because of the nature of it, the main interface script can get quite large. It's not nice and modular like these individual scripts. But there are ways to deal with that. And when you come to scripting, if you take any of my scripting classes, I discuss methods to mitigate some of these problems and organize your code to make it maintainable, readable, and manageable. Okay, so that's it for the overview of the module tree. Hopefully I've given you a clear understanding of the structure of the module tree. And I've let you know about some of the little quirks to look out for, which I hope in the future will be fixed. But once we know about them, we can deal with them and work around them. It's not a big deal. All right, head over to the next video and I will see you there.